When are you getting married? Never. Aye, Baba. You can't say that. I'm serious. Why not? It's not my thing. Huh? It hasn't been modeled well enough for me to look forward to it or to find value or to see anything about it that I think is attractive. But uh, you have children? I do. Obviously, you need to get married. No, obviously. Why you how, how do you raise kids? So these are the questions I always get asked because I'm anti-marriage. How do you plan to raise a family if you're not I'm married? I'm raising my kids now with ease even. I mean, there are complexities, but... What are your issues with marriage? I just don't see value. I don't see why we must be contractually bound to each other to show commitment to each other. I don't think the two go hand in hand. You realize back in the day you couldn't access the privileges you have now without marriage, sex, yeah, absolutely. children. No, yeah, absolutely. So it's because I don't know you can't. About you the can, sex. I don't know about the sex, though. You couldn't. If you look at uh, religion, Christianity, if you look but at I'm culture. Not Christian. But I'm saying back in the day, you had no choice because you'd be part of a tribe. But that doesn't matter to me now. In my sure. lived reality, that makes absolute no sense. So it's because you can difference. get the milk without buying the cow? No. It's, uh, it's about decision making. Uh, yeah, that's it. How does fatherhood feel? Um, surprisingly good. You know, I think I've always wanted to have kids. It's always something that I thought would be nice, you know. Mm. Um, and nice to have. <laughs> in retrospect, now yeah. I'm just like, hmm. <laughs> you know, last, last night we spent about five odd K on x-rays and CT Jesus. Um, my daughters, they, they can't tell us even what went wrong. So they think it's a disc, but they can't say because it it's a child. Therefore, bones haven't formed properly. So they'll just put a cast just in case. The stress of parenthood. The stress of parenthood and constantly being paranoid, mildly paranoid about your child's well-being. I'm not. I think the mom carries a lot of that, mm. which is maybe even like a natural selection thing. But I am zero paranoid about kids. Zero. If they get hurt, if they fall off a chair, if they stab themselves by mistake. That's toxic things, masculinity. No, it's or not. Or you're lying. No, it's not. You have to be worried. And you're a father of daughters. I think there, there's a level of worry that's warranted. Yeah. And then there's just letting kids be kids. You know, I think we lived very um, cocooned lives as mm. kids because of whatever fears our parents had. Mm. I think there is there's room that's required for growth, um, for exploring as a child. And you can't do that if you are constantly being hovered above. Mm. I just that's just my viewpoint. And so I I raise my kids with as little resistance as possible around the things they want to do and explore. Where where does this come from? This, this view of I want my kids to explore and try things out and get burnt a little bit. Is that how you were raised? It's not. Um, like I said, you know, we grew up in homes where things were strict. You know, you mm. couldn't do certain things. You couldn't go out at night. You couldn't do this. And I don't see today why we were prevented from doing this stuff. You know? mm. Because I think if you have the experience, you are likely to make better decisions because you've gone past a particular point. Um, and if you're not allowed to experience stuff, then, you know, by the time you do experience them, and sometimes it's a bit too late. And the ramifications of those actions are a lot more consequential than they are as a kid. Yeah. You know, so I think the learning and developmental stages of any kid, um, it's critical for them to do dangerous things carefully. They do say to what you're saying about <clears throat> it's almost like calculated risk parenting. It's easier to raise strong kids then repair broken men so i i think what you're saying wait, wait, speaks wait, come again because you say it's easier to raise it's not it's not my quote by the way no no say say it again though so that it I is can... easier to raise strong kids mm -hmm. than to repair broken men men in particular oh no it's just a it's just a quote i think it's an old quote or like men as in the i think as as mankind okay. sure, sure, sure. yeah no i don't okay. i don't think it's about men men okay <laughs> i think it's just the idea of sure I think they're saying, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, rather work on this foundation now Absolutely. to what you're saying that if you do the whole fear, paranoia, mm. by the time your child is 20, 25, and it's like, no, take risks. They're so petrified. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it's like, no, just explore. When you're old, you're like, look, I, I know my boundaries, but I got to feel them and I wasn't forced Absolutely. kind of situation. I think that, I think then my parenting is informed by my lifestyle choice 
um, if you look at the work that I do and the risk that I have to have. What work is this? Um, as an entrepreneur, number one, uh, mm. in the food industry, I am, I guess some will call a restauranteur. Mm. Um, I also run a catering company that I have been running from uh, my UJ days, yeah. so since 2012. Um, but the, to the point is that- 10 years, congrats, by the way. Yeah. It's a decade, that's, that's big. It is. I think it needs to be celebrated. At it's like your point. first baby before your children. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Absolutely is. And I, I've been very committed to it. And mm. I think maybe my, my, my lack of uh, commitment to other things may speak to <laughs> <the page. laughs> um, Your career is a very jealous uh, it is. main chick. Absolutely. Demands all of my attention. Um, but yes, I think the risk element of stuff is, is coming from that. Mm. I, I, I I have no issues with risk. I take it all the time. Uh, it's an everyday thing. So I believe my kids, in order to be balanced human beings, because myself and the mom are very different, you know, people. She's yeah. completely the opposite of me. It will be. It's it's a great attribute for them to have someone like me mm. as their dad and not the same as their mom. Do you think you're? Um, what's the question I'm trying to ask? Do you think we as a generation are fathering, right? There's, there's a lot. I think that's a quite a, it's quite a deep question. It's mm. loaded because it makes a number of assumptions, mm. you know, and part of those assumptions is that there's a generation that fathered correctly. Mm. And I don't know if either of us can answer that question. Assess. I know about your dad. You mm. probably know a little bit about mine. And I think we are building what we think is right in terms of fatherhood. Yeah. And it's informed by how we were brought up. It's informed by our environment, current and past. And so it's very difficult to answer that question with the straight yes or no, mm. um, because we're figuring it out as we go. I know for a fact that being there for my kids, picking them up for school, going to their shows is critical. And I know this from a psychological point of view, not even like, a social point of view, right? Mm. The developmental stages and early uh, childhood development. I think your phone might be vibrating. Please just check. It is. Okay. I don't know if you can switch that off. I just the vibrates it. thing. No, no, no. I don't know if I can. Um, How about you have any phone? It's mine, but I mean, if I turn off the vibrate, then it goes to ring. Which I Those have. are the only options. Well, then I know how to what operate. What phone is this? No, no, I must go into real settings. There's no quick. What phone is what phone is that? I know exactly what needs to happen. Jeez. Jeez, but we're not we're, we're still no, rolling. It's, by it's, the way, I want fine. to I want to keep this footage. It's fine now. We're still rolling. It's fine now. Thank you. Sorry. Apologies. You are speaking about fatherhood. Yes. And that is not an, a, a straight answer because yeah, we're also um, basing so, it so on. So from a social and psychological point of view, there are a number of issues that speak to why it's important to have a father in a child's life. Um, the balance between the, you know, the testosterone and the uh, estrogen. estrogen. Yeah, uh, is critical. Estrogen with an O. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, you know, it, it's critical that you have both. But we are also asking these questions of ourselves. We, I'm in a group with 200 other dads. Mm. And every day we're trying to redefine what fatherhood looks like. And we question some of the things that we do, some of the things we've learned. Um, we question how we are going about raising girl kids and how we're going about raising boy kids. Um, and every day is a new you know, uh, 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 observation. It's a new revelation as well. So it's great to be a dad. Mm. It's very challenging. But I think it's one of the most joyous things that one can experience. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like having a kid. You know, nothing. it's like you can have a dog. Lots of people <laughs> do. And I'm I'm on the fence about, you know, people making dogs such a big deal. But nonetheless, um, you can have a dog, but it's not the same. It never gets to speak. Yeah. It'll never sort of have a personality that you'll understand fully. Um, but it also never like achieve great stuff it or never not. becomes fully independent yeah it just it just will always be there looking to you mm. to serve it and i think kids evolve into these either really amazing human beings or on the opposite side the worst thing on earth mm. and 
it's on you as a parent to try and drive them to the better side, or at least what you consider to be better. So two things. The first one is from a psychology perspective. Uh, <clears throat> this is something you've studied, something you've read. And then the second one being, if you can please elaborate on the group of the fathers yeah. and what the objectives of that group are. Sure. Um, I, I studied biochemistry and psychology at the University of Johannesburg. Mm. That was a degree I sort of stumbled upon and maybe the, the combination I stumbled upon, but I thought it was great because it made sense. Mm. Um, the brain is largely linked to the chemistry of the body. So to me, that was very exciting. I think um, I always refer back to psychology being my chill out spot because you know, they were great looking girls uh, <laughs> in those classes. Uh, <laughs> the, Baba, material, psych, Baba. the material, the material na na. was all right. You know, the material yeah. was nice to, to, to read. It did jog the brain quite a bit. You know, both Freud and the many sicknesses were interesting things to read about where the, the, the science part of it was really hard. But I also then became very engrossed into the psyche by becoming a behavioral therapist mm. where I used to do one-on-one -on -one behavioral therapy with um, autistic kids. And now if you know anything about autism, um, it's quite wide in terms of the spectrum and how far reaching the effects are on each individual child. And for me, that was a crossroads of, do I continue to invest myself in psychology or not? Mm. Or do I go and find out what else it is that I love to do? Um, but I found it very intriguing because I understood at a very young age what kids needed to become self-sufficient, to be functional in society, mm. you know. And I think a lot of us just don't have opportunities where we get to understand the mechanics of developing a child. Mm. You know, I think you get thrown into this space where you've impregnated someone, you might or might not have had the conversation about the birds and the bees with your mom or dad. For many blacks, it just doesn't happen. You find Zero. about it in the streets. Zero. Um, and so your perspective about raising kids is very warped um, mm -hmm. because not informed, yeah. you know? Um, and so I enjoyed the psychology for that. I think it really brought a great side to me that I, I would have never otherwise, you know, encountered. Um, to go back to the group. No, sorry, before you speak about the group. <clears throat> yeah. Before you became a behavioral therapist and yeah. worked with kids with challenges, had you been exposed to children in another capacity? I asked this because my sister, my younger sister and I, Penrose, there's a 12 year gap. Yeah. And I feel like that was great fatherhood training. Kabang, I was in grade seven. Absolutely. But I was changing nappies. I was feeding her. I was... So I was ready to be a father mm. early because of her. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out, it almost seems like that was training for you, but did you have any other training prior? And do you suggest, because little girls babysit, but sure. boys never do. They don't. That's true. Uh, I did. Look, it's not your call to make. You know, if your parents aren't going to have another child, it's, that's that. Yeah. But I think we've got nephews, we've got cousins, we've got all sorts of, you know, extended family. I did raise my brother, you know, there's a 13 year gap between him yeah. and I, he just turned 21 a couple of weeks ago. And I remember distinctly leaving him in a bathtub in his poop and I was thinking <laughs> to myself, why am I, why do I have to do this, you know? <laughs> but over time, I, it became important for me, for him to be okay. And part of my role was to sort of, you know, get him through it being just us in mm -hmm. the house. You know, I was 13, my mom was at work, um, his dad was at work. We, we, we share only a mom. Um, and I just had to do it. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, definitely accelerated uh, my capacity in terms of taking care of kids. Um, it's great exposure, but I don't mm -hmm. know if, if, if it's important in learning how to become, because no one can teach you this stuff, right? Changing nappies is easy. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a mechanical thing. This it's scary. It's do. scary for first-time parents that have never changed a nappy before. I've seen them. I suppose. I suppose that makes sense. And but maybe you, maybe you're taking it for granted because you got the training. But you get used to it, right? You, you're supposed to get used to it, yeah. You do get used to it, um, and and by virtue that is your child, you should sort of enjoy doing it. It's not <laughs> great, but you know, um, I I might have been slightly traumatized by having to raise my brother as well. Yeah, like that can my happen. childhood you that know, can happen um, my 
not independence, you know, because you're mm-hmm. forced to quickly become independent. True. And if you look at my entire life thereafter, I've been super in- independent mm-hmm. and that doesn't make anyone happy around me, you know, because I lack a lot of compassion around certain things. And you don't need a person. You're like, well, if you want to leave, it's fine. I'm, f- I'm okay. Yeah. I've I'm, been I'm, doing I'm this not, alone. You know, I'm not very, I've been in love and like really in love and wanted those people to stay, but like, I'm okay with them going leave as well. Them. Uh, and I don't want to go home every weekend. You know, I was one of mm. those kids. I didn't want to go home every weekend. Um, I don't call my mom every other day. You know, mm. she's really upset about it. My dad even worse. Um, and that's like a, a relationship in repair. But my mom, who's always been there, mm. I don't find the need to call every day and find out how she's doing, you know. Um, but she'll call me and be like, yeah, you don't call. And I'm like, you know, yesterday nothing speci- you know, particularly special happened. Yeah. Um, I'll call you when I need to, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and that's really how those relationships have gone. And I think it's part of that raising a kid as a kid mm. um, and then all of a sudden being expected to still behave like a child, mm. you know, or respond as a child or sort of uh, do the things that adults um, expect of you. And I just, yeah, I don't, uh, it's not my thing. The other concern before you speak about the group of psychology, you're speaking about the importance of being present as a father and one of the things i've worried about is you are saying we don't even know if there ever was a generation that was good at fathering and who gets to decide who gets to define what's a good father what's a good parent now if you're saying look psychology suggests to prefer as a parent to be present who's psychology because i'm very worried you speak about your freuds and these guys i get worried about this might be good according to you guys and you can substantiate but maybe it's not what's optimal yeah you know how do you feel about masi kuluma just as black people about white psychology mm. uh, white parenting methods being the ones to come and tell us this is what's right and the way you guys are doing it is wrong i don't think you know i agree with white psychology completely um i also don't believe that how black people in the main lived is the right way mm. you know um it's consequential you yes know? black fathers went in the home because they had to be at work true the work was quite far etc cetera, etc cetera, and therefore right mm. and 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 that meant a particular framing whereas the white dad might have been working 30 minutes from home mm. and, you know able to come back it's coming home. back every day and so you know, the, the psychology is drawn around some of those things, but we have to appreciate both. We have to look at both and say, okay, we recognize that when, when our black fathers were working in the cities and they've left their kids behind, these are some of the traits we can see, mm. right? S- similarly, if we look at white kids, and not to say white kids who are raised by, you know, a, 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 a family of mom and dad mm. become the best type of child. No, yeah. there are traits that are, great that Mm. we want to extract so what do we take from either side that we want to move forward yeah borrowing from both sides and so we have to define it ourselves which i think is a great segue into why dope black dads came about or is around right dope black dads yeah sure um bunch of dads very sort of um cosmopolitan dads in the main there are there's always going to be voices of you know extremities on either side but in the main the idea is to celebrate being a father Mm. number one number two i think it's quite important for us in the group to constantly remind ourselves of the importance of our being in the lives of our kids Mm. and the group is not about husbands it's about fathers (laughs) and that's important i am always looking out for because i'm just like it doesn't be being married doesn't make you a great dad yes you know um we we know lots of stories but the presence that you have in your kids lives is what matters the most and we share our stories both losses and wins Mm. and we give each other advice based on our experiences so a lot of us will go in there with you know as an example my father had never been to my restaurant in the two years that it was open. And it's something that I bring up in the group. The number of different opinions I'm going to hear are as a result of 
200 different experiences mm. about why fathers might not have done that and why it is appropriate or not. Mm. And I'm, I need to be willing to hear it all and then from there decide for myself, you know, what's important. Um, the group is great in that there is, we're not ever fighting each other. It's mm. always trying to look at things from a positive perspective. Mm. Um, it's about also holding space for each other. Like I had a bad day it's really tough for men to speak about this. Like, it's really hard for me to, you know, come say, Peño, give me a hug because sure. I'm feeling sad. Sure. But we speak about emotions a lot more in that platform mm. than we would in other spaces, which I think is really critical because you do have bad days. You do have days where things are not going right. Mm. Um, men particularly go through a plethora of difficulties every day, trying to support families, trying to be the greatest dad, trying to be a supportive lover, trying to be a confidant. All these things are quite heavy. Mm. And society, as it were, expects you to just get it and hold it together. Mm. And none of us are, you know. This, this group is open. It's to open to anyone. anyone. Open it, to it, any so, it sounds like a support group for men fathers to figure their own selves out more yeah. than you guys actually have a, a definition of what you're trying to build like let's say for example dope dads is for black fathers who believe in there's jesus a whole, and, a whole and thing that when you come into the group they send that thing is has, it a criteria of what you need to be there's no criteria you, uh, you have to be a dad and your intentions must be good about fathering that's it i think that's the key okay if, and remember, it's a referral. So if I think Penrill is a great dad by virtue of experience, yeah. I would then suggest to him if he would like to come into the group and explain So to it's him. for good fathers? No, no, no. If I think... I, I hear you, but I'm saying when you say it's by referral, yeah. is it based on I think this is a good father? So if I see a guy who I think That's is the a assumption. shit dad, I don't refer him to the group? You could if you're trying to save him, if you're trying to show him a different light. Yeah. I haven't seen that. Okay. I think it's about birds of a feather. Okay. You know, okay. trying to So there is like some identity and, culture there, there similarities. I think there has to be with any group. Yeah. Belonging is important and belonging comes with a criteria of some sort. Do you guys ever think of the idea of absent shitty dads? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most importantly for the fact that your children, part of what's going to be best for them is living in a functional society. And being in a functional society means they're going to be dealing with kids that have daddy issues. So Absolutely. how do we try and resolve that for them? So I think those are projects that the group undertakes mm. to say, okay, this year, what are we doing about a particular X issue? Yeah. Right? And in the group, I mean, there are guys who don't have access to their kids who are fighting for access. Mm. In the group, there are guys who are going through divorces and they don't know what the outcome is going to be. And so, you know, it, it, it's it's not just all great dads sort of um, kumbaya -ing. Um, There are real struggles, mm. you know. And I think once we have gotten to a place where we've clearly identified and structured this environment, we can then begin to tackle social issues. We are tackling them by speaking out about them because yeah. the collective, you know, uh, effort of 200 people is quite is quite big. But I think there are projects we can undertake to say, okay, we know that there are problems that boy children are facing in Soweto. Mm. What do we do? We do we go bring an Tlatlalax, you know, into the pot and try and rally up some young kids mm. and then speak to them about these issues, or do we, you know, find a Mabonya who has the resources and maybe a platform and go speak about these things? But mm. I think it's things that we're conscient consciously thinking about all the time. I don't want to carry on with these questions. Let me go to women. Okay, before I go to women, I'm, I'm actually going to carry on. We've got a situation in the world now where it feels like masculinity is fighting for a space. Um, let's say on social media. Um, I'm using masculinity generally. Sure. Other people could argue, argue toxic. Mm. Um, where it feels like feminists... <clears throat> The LGBTQI community, liberals have become very vocal and it's almost become oppressive yeah. to what's called real traditional men. And you've got some of the guys that are speaking up. Jordan Peterson, Andrew Tate is even saying things like, dad doesn't need to be around, you know. <laughs> so I'm just trying to figure out 
in the different shades of manhood that are out there, your personal views on some men, old school in their thinking, who look at some of the work you guys are doing, some of the way you parent, because you're very hands-on, yeah. teach your girls how to cook, you're there, and it's like, but you're soft, you're being feminine, you like being a second mom, you know, what are your views in this resurgence of masculinity slash toxic masculinity and how you feel it impacts the raising of children? Um, is the panel show about such intense questions all the time? Parenting it is such a... Complex uh, beast. No, no, no. Actually, it's, it's not. It's not. But um, I think you and I are two of the men. I, I think we live in very privileged spaces where we are around... You spoke about a generation of good fathers. And when I look at history, not just in South Africa, but yeah. across the world, yeah. and we look at different frameworks of what we deem success, I'm convinced that we are the greatest fathers of all time. If you look at all the boxes that could be ticked, uh, the masculinity, the feminine aspect, the listening to our kids, the being tough, the allowing them to feel around, I think we're a great combination of almost everything. And even the black, white, mm. we're bringing all of that and... We're so sober and we're so focused. And I don't think fathers historically have been so plugged in. Not our generation. I'm sure. speaking about us sure, as sure, a sure. privileged niche. Sure, sure, sure. I think we're the greatest you. fathers of all time. I'm with you. So because of that, I, I know we take fatherhood and parenting as like a extreme science, <laughs> art, and, and we're passionate about trying to mold these kids in the best way possible. So that's why the conversation, I guess, yeah. becomes heavier today. I think you, you need to not try too hard in parenting. I mm. think you do need to have a... You need to be water about parenting. You need to be able to fit into certain, you know, molds and, and shift when shift is required, solidify when that is needed, um, and just let loose sometimes, you know? Isn't and that following societal trends? It's not. I'm talking about focusing on your kids. So okay. in this uh, analogy, it's about you being water to your kids. Okay. It's got nothing to do with the outside world because that, mm -hmm. that, that is another animal altogether. You don't know what other parents are doing or saying to their kids. Mm -hmm. And so you have to try your best in their space, in their time uh, with them to, you know, show them what you want them to become mm -hmm. or how you'd like them to, to, to behave in society. Um, masculinity... I think the the word itself is really being run down. It's it's you know a lot of people are confused about what it is. Um, a lot of people are questioning their masculinity. Mm. Uh, men in particular, I suppose. Um, but when it comes to fatherhood, specifically, when I think about myself and when I think about how I approach, you know, being a man, I've always tried to be me. Mm. And I say this, if I look back when we met, uh, maybe 10 odd years ago, I played a lot of R&B and I think it annoyed a lot of people I lived with. I, hallelujah. I can agree with that. I continue. I continue, I continue to play that type of music because that's what I have loved yes. and continue to love. I know that a lot of guys have come over the hill of hip hop because, you know, it just doesn't make sense. <laughs> and now they're listening to a bit of R&B and they're enjoying it. Yeah. And they've got the audacity to call and ask <laughs> for, for playlists. Right? The audacity. How um, dare you? And for me, I think, you know, the softness is key to being human. It's got nothing to do with the masculinity that lives within me. It's about the human aspect, you know. What are the things that make me human? And when I have to think about that and how it's represented in society, I look at how I enjoy the things in my life that I do on a day to day. Mm. I enjoy cooking. Am I going to share it with everybody that I meet? Yes, that's what I do. I do it for a living. I do it for fun. Mm. And if someone else thinks it's soft, that's great, you know, but it's our opinion and I'm not very bothered by it. You know, otherwise I would have shifted a long time ago and gotten into harder spaces, mm. you know, I also happen to be light skinned, which is also not great because then the association light, is you even are worse, you For know? sure, you cry yourself to sleep at night. <laughs> uh, no. Take a lot of no, selfies. No, 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 none of that. Um, the selfie thing has become more <laughs> normal, I think, for everyone uh, over the years. It used to be taboo. You know, you, you, you take it thinking, yes, yes, what am I doing? 
Uh, but I think it's much better now. I think vanity are you are you a feminine man? Part of, I wouldn't say so. What does that even mean? You know, you spoke about oestrogen, estrogen, yeah. and uh, testosterone. Yeah, you you say you don't Do you mind some of mind? the soft, the cooking. No, those things. Absolutely not. I think those are practical skills you need mm. as a human being. Okay. If I never get married, which I won't. No, oh, that's, I need that's to know, harsh. I need to know how to cook for myself. But you can't be breaking women's hearts like this. Say maybe one day when no. I meet the... Huh? No. Uh, my heart doesn't have the capacity anymore. The capacity for what? To love like that. Love? Yes. You I link, don't believe in you link love. You link love and marriage. I'd have to be in love to get married. Oh, it's I can't R&P. Do it. R&P. I can't do it. This is the R&P speaking. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is yes. the softness. Over... This is the feminine. Over the years. This is the feminine. What I have seen... Through and through, even today, there are people who are married, mm. friends, uh, associates, etc. Mm. They don't love where they are, mm. and so they find alternative things to keep them happy. Mm. And that's not how I see myself living. Your personal opinion—you spoke about yourself, but your personal opinion in this masculinity you're seeing—do you like it? Do you think it makes sense? Do you genuinely not care? You're like, as long as you're happy, do you, dude? I think I genuinely don't care. I think... It has an impact, though, on your children. It does. And your life. However, my kids would be more concerned with how they are being raised by me mm. and who I am versus what the rest of the world says I am. Mm. And I think, for me, that's very important. They need to self-actualize very early on because that's, for me... The, they need the to. Line. They need to. Absolutely. That's one of the things you're driving. The Find lack yourself, of identity, be independent. The lack of identity in self is... The biggest problem we are facing now. Mm. Everyone is questioning whether they are man enough or woman enough. Mm. And that leads you into a rabbit hole that is unexplainable. Yeah. If we are clear that I am a good human being and I can distinguish between good and bad, mm. for me, that's all that matters. If you want to be something else in terms of how you look, mm. in terms of how you're affiliated in ter- you know, sexually or otherwise, that's okay. Mm. Be a good human being. Yeah. That's like the most critical thing for me. Overarching everything else. Mm. If you want to love a woman, great. Be great to them. Be sure. a great person. And that's that's really it. Now, the impact of women on fatherhood and your thoughts around that. Sure. Because I'm not going to go into it, but I'm looking forward to a genderless future, personally. And it's taken me um, very many years to get to this point where I'm happy with the idea of potentially removing gender yeah. or coming up with new genders, not what's currently being proposed, but the idea that just because she can carry a baby doesn't mean she needs to be nurturing the baby. Sure. If the person that she made the baby with is better. If this person wants to cook, if that person wants to bring home the bacon, do your thing. The sure. fact that you have a penis vagina, yeah. just, but the world is not ready for that. So I'm just wondering... Because there's so much fighting mm. between men and women. You speak mm. about situations where even with dope um, dads, yeah. um, you've got a situation where guys are fighting to access their kids. Yeah. What impact do you think women play in this fatherhood role? Do you think women have got it figured out? Do you think they, they, they fucking shit up? Are they coming with baggage from our mothers because our mothers were single mothers that they may be now taking out on us? I think the whole thing is tainted. You know, I think... Women come from a society that has suggested so many things about what it means to be a woman, particularly what it means to be a mom. Mm. I have lots of friends. I have a partner who um, is a mother, mm. and I've seen that she knows nothing. You know, it's <laughs> like we are, we are asking each other the same. What do we do now? Yeah. You know, because we don't have the answers, yeah. right? And we both don't believe the answers from the past are the mm. right ones either. Okay. So cutting my child's hair because you believe something is not what I'm going to do. Um, I don't see why. My kid is fine. You know, her hair is grown. She's three. And I don't see how it affects her. So I think they don't have it figured out. Mm. The impact on fatherhood, though, is that the gender normative is that the, the mom is the caregiver, mm. is the nature, mm. you know. And we do find women who just don't feel the mother thing you know it's like i can give birth 
and a lot of them are post, you know, are like, actually, maybe I shouldn't have kids. You know, I shouldn't mm-hmm. have had kids. Um, because it's not something that really resonates with me. But because husband, because marriage, because family, and pressure, you know, across the board, um, when you're married in the workplace, the next question is, you know, when mm-hmm. are you having kids? When you're married at home, when you go back at Christmas, where are the kids? Mm-hmm. When can we expect? So all of that stuff, I think, really does create a little bit of a, you know, a, 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 a complex, you mm-hmm. know, and so people fall into these these traps. Um, we had kids because we wanted to. We we both really knew that that's the thing we want. We chose each other. I mean, yeah. I figured really logical human being here, very stable in her thinking. Her planning is really solid. I'm not. This is going to be a great uh, partnership. But the, it wasn't a love decision. No. It was a rational, no, logical no, decision. No, definitely not love. You okay. Know? Um, which is okay because I think love doesn't it doesn't carry you through all of this stuff. You know, it doesn't carry you through the 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 growth spurts, the terrible twos, the poops at night, the having to wake up. That stuff just doesn't, you know, it's not carried by love. You have to be a logical thinking human being to say, okay, it's my turn to wake up. Let me just do it. Maybe uh, that's what you need to get married. Move away from the R and B and the love. Look to the logic and rationality, and maybe what's the logic that can sell you? What's the logic and rationality? Dual income. I don't know. For manage what? your assets better. Dual income for what? So that what can happen? So you're not going to abandon your children. No. Why and would it's, I do that? And it's it's partly because you're not you didn't make them and you're not raising them purely on love. Maybe the same with a partner. Maybe you'll commit to a partner for life. Because you're not doing the love thing, you're like, let's focus on the practicalities. Are you good at so, yeah, this and I do yeah, that? And yeah, absolutely. I'm open to, you know, um, having... Oh, you believe in life partnerships? Yeah, I do. Oh, the issue is just no, the... Not with a singular person, though. Oh. But that's another... That's another story for another... Sorry, one. the impact of, of women um, on fatherhood. Women define what fatherhood and have for the longest time. You know, they have a female privilege when it comes to children do. and telling men how to raise Ab- the children. Absolutely. Um, you get told that you must. And we have a fear, remember, because we also didn't carry these kids. So we don't know how yeah. that feels. We don't have the bond. Right. So you would assume at the very least that a mom knows best mm. by virtue of that biological makeup. Mm. And therefore you get told. And most men fall into the back seat of accepting being told, mm. right? Um, you must, this is the role that you must play. Mm. And then you sit in your corner and you do it. There are those of us who choose to go against that grain, mm. you know, and say, no, it's actually fine. Let's rather than you do two weeks at your house, I'll do two weeks at my house, mm. right? In that way, we parent however we want. Nobody has to worry about the other's uh, doings. Is this what you have currently? No. So oh. currently it's, I'm three days with them okay. uh, in the home. And I'm out after that. We've got a helper that lives in over the weekends. And that's purely because of work. Before, when we only had one child, um, it was one week in, one week out. I hate co-parenting. That's what I'm asking. I, I hate co-parenting. I hate, co-par- I hate co-parenting because there's this fem- female privilege sure. of if we're going to co-parent, we need to be on the same page. Yeah. But the same page is not us compromising our pages. The same page is her page. No. So I. So I, you as I a man have to compromise to become that. I vehemently had to go and say, I am not going to parent like what you are parenting. Yes. You can't tell me how to parent. Let me parent hear, my way. I hear what you're saying. And some of it is very logical and makes sure. sense. But kids don't need to be X, Y, Z just because you say so. Mm. We don't know what's going to happen. If we allow these kids to go play in the playground alone without watching them every two, 24 seconds, um, we don't know what's going to happen. Mm. They might get hit by a car, sure. Mm. They might just come home safe, yeah. which has happened multiple times. And on the one time where they get hit by a car because we weren't watching, it won't be because we are bad parents. Mm. It will be because that's what needed to happen. Mm. you know. Uh, and so I am very against the idea that a mother can tell a father mm. how to parent. You've never been a father, so how can you tell me? Mm. You probably have never had a father in your own home, hey, so how can you tell me? Hey, so hey, there are a number hey. of you know uh, uh, um, disparities that we need to consider, and I think choosing a, a partner that that you've studied and sort of understand is critical as well, because mm. there are obviously crazy people out there, mm. both on on either side, and 
I think being able to speak to someone at a level that is not about the two of you mm. is very important in trying to raise and get to the same goal where kids are concerned. It sounds like you and the mother of your children are modern because you, you said something about hair and I started thinking superstitions <laughs> and culture. You guys are not raising your kids culturally, religiously? Religiously, no. None of that. Um, there was a stint of, you know, these things come up because of family. Yeah. Um, but we both aren't. In the entire time I've been with her, um, I've never heard, you know, a cultural utterance. Yeah. All of a sudden, when there's kids, you know, you start to hear stuff. You know, you need to, <laughs> you need to go to my house to do what, you know? Um, What's happening at your house? Let's have a big bribe if you want people to meet. Um, so it, 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 it does get a bit complex. And, and it's only when these things happen. But we aren't, you know, our everyday lives are not about culture and not about tradition. Because a lot of the questions that arise from cultural, traditional practices can be answered. And I have a big problem with that. You can't Does, Doesn't that mess with your children's identity? And if you're saying can't be answered, maybe your own identity, you don't feel you're lacking something? I don't. In this day and age, I don't think so mm. at all, you know. Um, have you not become a white person? No. Almost cultureless. That's why you don't care about culture and these things. You just, I, I observe, you're parenting as umlung. I observe culture, mm. you know, and I hear and listen out. And apply what I think makes them. For me, it's always about what makes sense and what is practical, mm. right? Tradition has to evolve as well. Mm. And I think if people don't recognize that, you get stuck in a world that isn't moving forward. Mm. And that's not the, the way the world is going. Whether we like it or not, we are not dialing on a wall anymore and speaking on a, 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 a piece of hardware. You know, we, we use cell phones. Mm. We can take pictures and send them immediately. Mm. Now, if culture says to me, no, you must continue to dial, I, I can't do that simply mm. because that's what culture suggests. I, I have to be... I have to make up my own mind about what makes the most sense in my home mm. for my kids, you know. And it's very difficult for someone who, you know, when parents say you need to be married, they need to say that with the certainty that what they have modeled mm. speaks to what they are saying. Now, if you come from a place where marriages just haven't been working out, who are you to come tell me to get married? What am Why I are married? you promoting something that hasn't been working for, for yeah, you? It's, you know, church. Why must... My, my grandmother's been praying for 90 years. <laughs> She's... She, there's, there's nothing to show for it, you know? Uh, if there was something, maybe then I would be... There's you to show for it. Her, you, you are the answer to her prayers. I don't think so. I huh? know my grandmother loves one particular thing. <laughs> <laughs> And if she's praying about me, <laughs> then that's the wrong thing to be praying for. Um, so, you know, we, just blacks in general, if you look at what religion has contributed to our social well-being, I, I just don't think it's the direction people need to be going. Um, but people need to hold on to stuff, you know. Mm. Uh, I think everyone needs an anchor. Um, I happen to be one of those people that don't need an anchor. I you, don't need, you are your anchor? Yeah. Come on, man. I don't need... Do you are the alpha and omega of your life. Absolutely. Amen. If I decide to take it right now, I can take it, right? Jeez. If and I, you and you've created life, so you can do both. So, so you can take life and yeah. And, and I'm not trying to be, you know, um, extreme about my views, but I do think there's a certain amount of belief in self that is critical for any level of success in any part of your life, mm. you know. And people relinquish a lot of that stuff to things like religion mm. and culture and tradition. And it's, it's, it's just not something I, I vibe with. Your thoughts around men like myself who have children with multiple women, mm -hmm. or I guess women that have children with multiple men, of which we always assume sure. it's because the men left. But sometimes it's, we've got experience that it's not that. Absolutely. I am due for a vasectomy next week. Aye, Baba. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. What's a vasectomy in normal human speak? I am I am snipping the line between or the line that allows me to impregnate a woman. Why would you do that? Because I don't want to have any more kids with other women. I'm happy to have the two mm. and be done with it. The complexity of blended families, the complexity of having to deal with two women who have your kids 
which I'm sure you know very well, is not something I want to engage. You're, you're getting a vasectomy out of fear no, of impregnating no, no, no. another woman? Um, no, 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 absolutely not. I mean, it's happened, but... Uh, Excuse me? Let's not go... Moving there. swiftly along. Um, Sorry. It's about responsibility. It's about saying, I have done my piece in mm. advancing humanity. You've, re- you're re- you've replaced you and the mom, at I'm, least. I'm, I've, I'm done, you know. Kids are also, factually speaking, today mm. expensive. And I say this very consciously because I know the expense of kids comes from the parents. Yes, the lifestyle um, you choose. Yes, mm. I have chosen a particular lifestyle. And I know, looking forward, that it's unsustainable to have more than what I have currently. Mm. And that's that's really the decision, and that's what it's based on. The mother of your kids is comfortable with this decision? You've discussed it with her? It doesn't her? matter. It's not, it's not about her. It's, it's, it's not. So why What if I, she'd like to have more of your children? She can't. But maybe she's willing to carry the financial weight. No, and the, no, no. I don't want to live with the burden of having her deal with all of that. It's not fair on anyone. Your views on having sons, because we are raised uh, specifically as African men to have this thing of, hey, my boy, my Look boy. Look at what sons are doing. Why would I want one? Oh, uh, hey. Look, Look, much. You tell me <laughs> if it looks great right now to have a son. You sons are, are not you, doing you, anything you, amazing you are, right you are someone's son, though. I am. Aren't you doing great? Look at me. <laughs> Look at me. Um, no, I, I, in Lale, if, uh, you don't, you, don't, you don't have those things. You don't I feel don't. A, like you're missing. You want a mini me. I don't. I don't think a mini me would come in the in the in the form of a boy. Um, it doesn't Hectic. matter to me. You know? Hectic. I think if my kids want to run my businesses after I'm dead, it's their choice. They mm. might actually want to be botanist and look after flowers, and I should be able to allow that to happen. Mm. My business needs to exist outside of them, and for the most part, for blacks. It's about who's going to take over my, you know, uh, what's the succession plan? Mm. And I think you need to build a business that can stand on its own and have kids that are independent of your stuff. You mm. know, not everyone wants to cook or run a food business. So that shouldn't even be the decision or part of why I want a boy, mm. if I wanted one. What is your wish for fathers and I guess mothers as well here moving forward? I'm sensing from the journey you've been on the work you're currently doing with the NPO, um, that there's a lot of redefining, a lot of learning from the past, taking what works, a lot of looking at the current space we're in, coming up with new labels, new views, et cetera. But what's your wish for us moving forward? What would you like to see? Look, I think there are some key issues that men and women have not faced yet. Mm. And I think that's where we need to start. I think if you look at the rampant behavior of men in relationships, in marriages, etc., just by looking at social media, you know, um, there's a lot of work that men need to do. There's a lot of acceptance and honesty that's required. I need to be able to be as a man, be able to say to a woman, I, I can't be in a monogamous relationship with you. Mm. Whether it's by virtue of biology, whether it's by virtue of their thoughts or the things that they still want to do, they need to be able to say that Mm. at at a starting point because we walk into relationships and we promise each other the the ends and, you know, the the moon and the stars, but we we know we're unable to deliver on that. Mm. You know, a lot of guys know that I'm I'm doing it because my parents think it will be a great idea to do it. Mm. And maybe it provides some sort of stability. Or maybe it looks good when I am at meetings that I'm married and it it suggests stability. It suggests you can trust them. (laughs) Of course. It's not the case, you know. There are many guys I would not trust with a lot of things who have kids (laughs) and wives and are very close to you. So I think honesty. For me, if we walk away with the ability to be honest about how we feel about our expectations about um, how much we can give, then I think maybe we'll get somewhere because underlying all of these problems is the inability to be honest. Who taught us to lie besides obviously R&B? <laughs> um, 
I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it's it's because we, we have normalized. It's almost like going to a job interview yes. when you meet someone. Now the yes. girl comes with makeup and sure. a weave, so sure. she's already not even herself. Absolutely. And then you come dressed in your best. Sure you borrow a mate's car and yeah. you're then not being yourself and there's almost like this three month probation getting to know each other and then after that of course it's already been built on a lie yeah. how much more honesty will be there and when you try to be honest from my experience to five girls, six months in if you try to be honest girls can't handle the truth so you end can't. up lying as well they really can't. who taught us to be honest and how do we solve it who taught us how to lie um i think it's become a function of getting what you want out of people in general you know or we know that lying allows us certain room um, to extract what we need in the case of men and women maybe sex maybe companionship whatever the case may be but we do it so that someone believes in us believes in what we purport to mm -hmm. want to build or do um, and i don't know how you fix that i think there's a there's a deep intense wanting that needs to come from you you know when you've decided that actually i can't live like this anymore it's unsustainable i can't pretend you know to be something i'm not then only maybe you know you can begin to do the work because before that you are simply going to continue on a spiral that goes downwards because you know that women can handle particular truths. Mm. You know, no one wants to hear that I want to be with someone else and you. Men definitely cannot handle Men women's can't. truths. Men can't. They're the worst, right? Worst. They are the, the epitome of a double-edged sword um, and they just can't handle the truth, right? Mm. But I think when we start to normalize being honest about what we want from other people, it might change the way in which we interact. Right now, it's all about getting what I want now. Mm. And we all know how to get there. But it's not sustainable. Mm. It's just broken hearts, left, right, and center. Kakhu, so I think in the spirit of time, um, I'm going to be shutting it down. I don't know if there's anything you'd like to add in particular about this topic. Um, you and I have had fathers that are not like us. And I feel like a big part of our parenting style is almost a trauma reaction to what they didn't do, you know. And then a lot of it is also borrowing from our mothers, mm. who are mothers. So that's why we have this soft feminine aspect to how we parent. And mm. it obviously shocks a lot of women because they're like, no, but you're a man. You're like, no, but I was raised by a woman. I know yeah. how to do these things. So yeah. I don't know if there's anything you want to add and maybe also touch on in, in, in the group that you have. Um, look, I, I, I personally, I think... Oh, first, maybe let me say thank you for, for, for having me. Um, it's been a great conversation, and I think we need to open up the conversation a lot more and perhaps even involve women who, you know, are raising kids alone, mm. um, raising kids with a partner. So we get a 360 view mm. um, because my view and version of things may not necessarily be what is the truth mm. i may very well be telling you all of this stuff to look great but it would be nice to hear what my partner has to say about yeah. some of this stuff because sometimes you know we we only give um, again you know we give just enough um in order to achieve what we want to achieve you know so it would be great to have a panelish sort of conversation about parenting um from very sort of extreme uh, 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 sides so mm so as to get a full picture. Um, Dope Black Dads is an amazing space, I think. Dope Black Dads? Yeah. Black. I don't want to repeat the black. You black. mentioned Cosmopolitan. Are there only black gents in the group? No. There's some colored, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but there, you, it, you're looking to, you're, you're looking, the group is pro-black. You're it's, not looking to diversify for now? I don't think we mind. There's, I think there's a one white guy. Um, oh, he doesn't mind being a Dope Black Dad. Solid? It is what it is. Um, okay. I think it's it's the foundation that is is important. Um, we meet for picnics, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we play with our kids. We get together on Sundays to just hang out, but also we just building relationships and friendships with other men who we assimilate to, I suppose. And I think that's a really great space for anyone who wants to become a dad, is a dad, 
um, always thinking about it, you know. Mm-hmm. So I think definitely join, join, join us and come and have some chats. Um, outside of that, it's been great being here. Um, watch out for, you know, what we're doing with my daughter, which I think is really exciting. Uh, it's only women right now that speak on that platform, uh, but I'd really love to see lots more dads engaging. Mm. Um, these are very practical tools on how to survive as a father yeah. with kids, and that's really it. Have you ever considered, um, I don't know if you do it, by the way, mm. um, therapy, and we make it a thing that parents, whether you're married, co-parenting, come to therapy, because I'm listening to you saying, I don't know what their mother feels or thinks, so that would be something where there's a mediator who listens. How do you feel? How do you feel? What do you think he's fucking? How do you think he's fucking up? Do you think she's a great mom? And just offload as well. I think we need as soon as you introduce third element mm. between two people, things always sort of shift. I don't know where we get the rawest form of honesty from individuals mm. um, without cameras or, or you know being able to capture it without them knowing or being too aware that there's a camera, you know. Or maybe um, having a mediator that sees you guys individually. Maybe, but, but I don't know if that is, you're still getting, because when you come together, you still need to get the same thing. Yeah. And I don't think you will. Okay. I think, yeah, I mean, we've been to therapy. So I, I speak from a point of, you know, um, understanding. And because I'm a rational human being, mm. The therapist sort of, you know, uh, was on my side, which to a large extent, I was like, I could manipulate this situation, yeah. but I'm trying to also make this thing work, mm. you know? So how do we find ourselves in spaces that actually make sense? How do we create, I don't know, platforms for people to truly, you know, express? And some people don't want to speak. Mm. And that's the other thing, right? True. So you can't force people to, to, to speak. Um, but no, I haven't thought about therapy uh, I think it's too complex. I think the human brain is, today, the human brain is a lot more difficult to understand and comprehend and diagnose than it was maybe 50 years ago. We are ex- overexposed. I'm excited about watching you as a parent, as you grow as a father, uh, as a restaurateur, uh, and a food solutions Don't get entrepreneur. Into that business, man. Restaurants are for people with money. When <laughs> <laughs> I lose money fast, go to the restaurant. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, man. Easy. Later.